Welcome to the Hap in the Bag Disc Golf Podcast, streaming to you as part of the Joe's Disc Golf Podcast Network. And here are your hosts, Ben, Joe, and RJ. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Half in the Bag Disc Golf Podcast. My, <laughs> My name is RJ. Uh, I am in Northeast Indiana, and today I am drinking this awesome glass of liquid IV because I had some wine and some uh, Buffalo Trace at dinner with my wife tonight. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hydrating for tomorrow, so I don't feel like I got ran over by a buffalo. And I'll let my co-hosts introduce themselves. We've got some awesome co-hosts today. Well, like Ooh. I said, I'll go ahead and turn the reins over to them. All well, right. I'm new, <laughs> so I'm just going to interrupt and break everything. Hi, everybody. I'm My name's Ian, first time uh, co-host, uh, long-time listener. I uh, hail from the uh, land of Chicago, drinking some Glen Fittich single Bears. cask. The Bears Ooh. and the Bulls. Uh, uh, bulls. But yeah, doing some Glen Fitch and some water. So that way also I don't feel like ass in the morning. I yes. Mean, yes, non-swear word. Edit <laughs> that. <laughs> he won't. Yes. He never does. I think we've yeah. dropped an F on before. That was our one for the season. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I My think bad. that was Ben. <laughs> or maybe it was Ben. I don't know. No, I think it was you, actually. Well, poopy pants. <laughs> well, this is Joe talking, using my good words and my indoor laugh, as my wife has yelled at me, so I don't wake up my child. Uh, I'm drinking a Jack Daniels single barrel, and it's very delicious. Um, there will be water later. I played two rounds in the wind and the sun, and it... I took the hard way to get to even and three down. We can go over that later. That was, yeah, that was fun. It was very windy. Yeah. Uh, respect to all the people out at Jonesboro and what's going to happen at Dynamic Dis Open. It's always a wind oh. tunnel. So, yeah. Yes. Good luck. Yes. Emporia, Kansas, known for its calm days. Oh, wait. Yes. JK. Rolling. Ah, yes. Um, yeah, yeah so, so let's, uh, uh you, you mentioned I that you played a little bit today. Let's, yarp. let's, uh, uh, go ahead and talk about our, you know, where people where can people watch, watch us play, play where, where people, people can get updates on the podcast, the podcast, all that stuff. stuff. Then let's, let's talk, talk a little bit about, about our, our experience playing this weekend. Um, so really quickly, so if you want to follow like us follow on us Twitter, on uh, you can find us at half in the bag DG. Uh, you, uh, that's where you can submit your listener questions and disc of the week. Uh, this week was a latitude 64 Jade, really pretty. Uh, if I do say so myself, it came from my collection. So take yeah. that however you want. Um, and then, like I said, you can submit your listener questions there. Uh, if you want to follow Joe and his podcast, where can they do that? Joe on the internet. At Joe's Disc Golf. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, website, and wherever you get all of your major podcast networking information, Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever. Joe's Disc Golf. Search it. You'll find it. It's an ugly picture. No, it's not. It doesn't have my face on it, so it's not the worst. <laughs> uh, if you are interested in watching the Fort Disc Golf Club and the final four that will be happening Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m., that'll be, uh, what is that, the 20... The 30th, I think. 30th? The 2030th? April 2030th? Yes. Uh, I don't know my dates anymore. Uh, that'll ah. be happening 3 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live, and there'll be a link tweeted out. It's nice. good times. Where can yes. people yes. follow you, Mr. Ian? You can find me mostly not doing disc golf related things <laughs> over on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv. Pomperfresh. That's P-O-P-R. Fresh. 
same handle pretty much everywhere. That's just generally what I go by Keep it simple. on all of the uh, internets. So that way no one knows who I am. Yep. <laughs> Ian and I follow the uh, kiss principle. Keep it yep. simple, stupid. Yep. Absolutely. I, I have the same gamer tag from RuneScape that I do for all of my uh, online gaming now. So uh, those of you that don't know what RuneScape is, um, I believe it's past your bedtime. Uh, those of you that do know what, what RuneScape is, remember to take some leave for your back. Uh, <laughs> I got my gamer tag when I started playing EVE Online. Which is yeah, a space buddy. MMO. Still it's going. Still going. Still going strong. Well, I you, may or may not have started up again. You you can actually yes. find RuneScape uh, on Apple, I think. So yep. probably. Yeah, that's, yeah, because I, I, your phone running it is infinitely is, more powerful than the PC <laughs> back in the day. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. So, somehow the graphics are the exact same. Uh, I think that's just a stylistic cho choice at this point. But now you get 60 frames. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Now, now I can see my ugly character's face. Uh, yes. Well, or the, the helmet on it, you know, moving up and down the talk. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, if anyone oh, yeah. wants to support the podcasting effort, they can do that uh, through Joe's Disc Golf slash merch. To get yep. some awesome, awesome merchandise. I've got a hat and a t-shirt coming. Yes. Uh, you know, sometime in the near-ish future. Uh, I was told that my order was was processing, which I assume just means that Joe's cat is playing in the box. Probably. Well, it's called drop shit and print on drop demand. What? So drop, drop shit. What? Oh, that's Ship. not what it sounded like you said. Working on my plosives. Okay, Your plosives. Yeah, I know. And Philo. Oh. If you go back and listen to the men, it's whatever whatever microphone they were using for the color commentator, it was awful. Yeah. So, yes, you can get some awesome merch uh, at Joe's Disc Golf slash merch. Um, help support him. Because he supports the rest of us. Yeah. He, he I'm not carries supported by thing. anybody. I'm just You're free just floating. an athletic supporter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this is what you're going to expect for the rest of this episode. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't worry, folks. It only goes downhill from here. Oh, yeah. We already hit the high water mark at the two second mark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when, I believe we hit when the high water said mark. Hi. At, <laughs> that was no i said hello oh okay i model it after my favorite uh non-disc golf podcast i don't know who that is uh it's the total soccer show um, okay yeah you know, means nothing to nobody or to anybody that doesn't watch soccer pay attention to soccer but if you like soccer go check that out uh, anyway if you um, like video games and a ton of swearing might i interest you in the filthy casuals <laughs> they're from Australia. So, so there's funny. a lot of words that get used very regularly that you may not hear. Not in the States. It's, not in the States. Is that, <laughs> that well, the the other C other word? Because the, yep. the C word that we don't say around my dog is cheese. Yes. Uh, yeah, she she knows that one. <laughs> it is not cheese. And I hope it, <laughs> never mind, I'm gonna stop there. There are also a lot of F bombs. Yeah. Yeah. But well, highly entertaining. Well, yes. Anyway. I believe what you were looking for, Joe, was it rhymes with stunt. <laughs> yes. Or, or another acronym is we'll see you next Tuesday. Correct. What a silly bunt. <laughs> anyway. Um, you know exactly what I'm talking about, Ian. <laughs> I do. Monty Python. That great, great sketch comedy show. Oh no! Oh, uh, was that in Flying Circus? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm not as familiar with that. Other than the one where he hits him. Oh, um, I think it's. Oh, I can't think of what the guy's name is, but he hits the guy who plays House in the head with a cricket bat. Q Laurie. 
Yes. I think you're thinking of um, Black Adder. Oh, uh, yeah. you're right. I don't, How did I get those two confused? You're, you're a couple decades off. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's... Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Like, I'm just... Listeners, I am staring at the screen in bewilderment at how I can get <laughs> those mixed up, because... Wow, they're both that's funny. It's just I mean, they're bro- they're both they're British both sketch comedy. comedy? Yeah, yeah. So it's all the same. Yeah. 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 Dry and anyway. witty. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, dry and witty, I think actually leads us pretty well into uh, our Jonesboro recap. <laughs> um because the MPO winner, I would say is dry and witty. He's got uh, a for the dark sense of humor. Yes, yes. I, I think he would actually be a really good interview for us. Oh, I think uh, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, he would never be on here because, dear Lord, we don't have that kind of pull. But hey, you know, if anyone nope. wants to try and hook us up with uh, Calvin Heimberg for an interview, yeah. You know he's a chemical engineer. <laughs> or he went to school to be a chemical engineer. He's a chemical engineer. Yes. He decided that he'd rather be poor and play disc golf, golf, though. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. Seems like right. happier. Yes. He, yes. He won yes. playoffs with Paul Macbeth. Yes. Uh, so it let's go exciting. ahead and go through our top. Was he excited or was he Calvin Heimberg excited? He was actually pretty excited when he parked the hole. Macbeth uh, shanked it relatively mm. speaking mm-hmm. and he was kind of in the rough a bit he had a shot but it would have been like a it looked like 70 80 foot at least throw in some mm-hmm. kayla distance and <laughs> uh yeah he obviously didn't make it calvin parked it 470 feet and just, yeah just that's all t- she wrote this your typical 470 foot park job oh yeah yeah you know heiser flip a destroyer yeah, you know, just yeah. pro things. Yeah, totally. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, so yes, yes. Uh, uh, Calvin. Ah, uh, where's where's my standings? I don't know. Sorry, scores. There we go. There we go. So yes, yeah, Calvin, Calvin ended up coming away with the win. Paul McBeth came in second uh, in the playoff. Yep. Third, Ke- uh, Kevin Jones. His fourth, Chris best? Dickerson. Kevin Jones' best finish this year, by a yes. lot. Yes. 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 Uh, fourth, Chris Dickerson. Fifth, Gannon Burr. Sixth, Matty O. Well, tied for sixth, Matty O with Simon Lazat, Joel Freeman, mm-hmm. Alden Harris. And then tied for tenth was Ricky Wysocki, Thomas Gilbert, Ezra Aderhold. And, and that's uh, yeah, that's the top ten right there. So, yeah, obviously the big thing is Vinny getting his first win of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, Finally. First win since... Boy, it's been a while for, for it to not be a silver series. It it feels like it's been a while, at least, um, you know, getting it done in the playoff. Uh, you know, really good win for him. Um, but then the other big story was yesterday. Simon Lazat threw, what was it? 13 down, I believe. 13 down at yep. this course. Uh, yes, at this course. I believe that unofficially that was rated a 1093. I believe so. Sorry, yeah, I was trying was, to look up stats, but yep, no yep. dice. Um, which uh, there was apparently a little bit of controversy about because it was rated higher than Macbeth's uh, 16 down, 16 at, down WR at WR Jackson. Um, personally, yep. I don't have any strong feelings about that. Um, Joe, I know Joe, you I know. know more about the ratings than I do. Do yes. you have any thoughts on this? Uh, it's a load of crap. <laughs> Paul McBeth, <laughs> 16 down at WR Jackson, Jackson should be rated as maybe not the highest, but one of the highest. His highest rated uh, round was at Fountain Hills, which is there's a decent amount of OB, but it's wide open. So... And because of the OB and how they calculate ratings, honestly, mm-hmm. for the pros, ratings don't matter anymore. They yeah. they shouldn't. They're fun for yeah. amateurs, for lower people. But once you get to that level, they just kind of break. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think we kind of saw that when Eagle played in a C tier. Mm-hmm. Um, who? That's the other big story coming out of this weekend on the MPO side. You, Eagle McMahon, uh, for those of you that have not heard, that have been living under a rock, uh, mm-hmm. it sounded like he dislocated his shoulder again. Yeah. At, you know, at Jonesboro on hole six, I believe. And I think that's what they said. Yeah, basically, that was it. He walked off the course. Yep. Um, Joe, I know you and I could probably go into a whole big, long discussion. Long story short, I was right on my show. I said he wouldn't finish in the top 10 until he got a shoulder fixed. He finished 14th at uh, WR Jackson for Champions Cup. Yep. And removed himself from play because he hurt himself. Mm hmm. So I uh, wish I was going to be wrong, but yeah. Yep. 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 Ian, Ian, you are not, not in the sports medicine pr- profession, so, so nobody lived I, I with me. Get, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to get, get your get thoughts, thoughts on this. If, if you have any strong thoughts, opinions, feelings, anything like that, because obviously Joe can get on a soapbox about this. I I'm can, not. I'm saving it for my show. I, I can, you know, talk talk about this for days, but uh, I, I want to give you a chance to jump in first. Well, I mean, it's one of those things where I'm enjoying sports as well as being a uh, theater professional and in the live event industry. If you've got an injury that's going to bone everything for everyone, it's kind of better to get taken care of right away and do what needs to be done and come back later because yeah if you really screwed up for everybody and you could have prevented it uh, you don't work anymore so yeah Yeah. it's just take care of yourself you you need to know you because there are certain injuries where you're like yeah it's going to be annoying but it's not like yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not going to impact the rest of your existence. This is one of those injuries where it's like, no, if you don't do this right, it could really screw things up for a good long while or ever. He is still currently the highest rated pro on tour. And I think he's 25. Did we say 24? Yeah, 25? yeah, right around right that. Around so that. so. He's got a long time in his career left. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I hope this doesn't screw up future plans. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like it could, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, I hope this is the wake up call that's like, okay, I'm going to get this taken care of. Yes. Yeah. yeah, You got to. Otherwise, it's just going to get worse. Yeah, and I think that combined with uh, I don't know Eagle, obviously, mm-hmm. but my impression of him is that he is a very I, I don't necessarily want to say reckless person, but he he is your typical early 20 somethings male who is invincible. Yes. I think all three Um, of us here can very much sympathize, maybe not on the pro level, but doing really stupid crap in our early 20s going, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, it only got, you know, only took getting hit by a limo to make me go, oh, yeah, I guess I can break bones still. Wait, 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 what? What? Oh, you you didn't hear (laughs) the story? Yeah. No, I have oh not heard goodness. this story. <laughs> All right. Is this, well, is this an off-air story or is this something that we can share on air? Oh, we can totally share this on air. It has oh, nothing yeah. to do with disc golf, but we can. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let I, me, I need to hear this story. Let yes. me paint the word picture for those listening audio only. But uh, all right, uh, we are entering Tech Week for a production of Camelot. At for the those Drew of you who don't know, theater. Tech Week is absolute hell, and he works probably 40 hours a day. Oh, yeah, it, <laughs> it, it feels like that. Uh, uh, yeah, eight it's days one a of week. Those, 
Yes. To quote the Beatles. Yep. It, it is eight days a week. <laughs> eight days a week, 40 hours a day. And uh, you <laughs> sleep in a, in a tiny uh, closet they give you. You don't go to go home. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we're about to enter this extremely busy p- period of time. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the bar that was near our college campus, Quigley's. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not going to drink. I'm just going to have a hamburger. I'm going to see my friends before for like a month. I'm not going to see anybody. So I'm riding home or not riding home, but riding riding to the bar. And up ahead, a light has just turned green. I'm like, oh, great. Cool. I'm going to I'm going to keep going. I see this limo pull up. And it goes, you know, past the line, just kind of hanging out in the middle of the intersection. It's like, oh, cool. He sees me. Great. And then he starts to turn and he just keeps stutter stopping. And I'm like, does he see me? Does he not see me? Now, the problem is my front tire has already crossed the white line. I am in the intersection and he is just continuing to come forward. And I'm like, all right. Full lean over to the right. Let's see how far over I can get before I hopefully don't get hit. And he just gooses it just enough that all of a sudden I hear thwack crunch. My motorcycle is now straight up. My back tire kicks a little bit. And I'm like, okay, depress the clutch because I'm like, I don't know what's happened. If my shifting gear is destroyed or not, I was like, okay. I I downshift. I hear a good solid kathunk and I'm like, okay, good. I've got it. So I released the clutch. And that's when I realize that crunching sound was not me downshifting. <laughs> Back tire locks up. I'm like, okay, it's it's fishtailing. I'm going to go over. So I start to tip it down. I'm like, and jump cuz I don't want to be underneath the motorcycle. No. Right, yeah. Yeah. So I hit the pavement and I've tried to tuck myself in a way that I should hopefully roll. And if I roll, I should get off the street. I don't roll. I just bounce. I just (laughs) thunk, thunk. And I'm like, okay, I'm alive. I got fingers. I can feel my toes. Okay. Traffic. Oh, no, they're not stopping. So I sit up. And I just weakly waving. I'm just like, Duh, please, please notice me. Please don't hit me. And I finally see that the headlights are slowing down. And I'm like, OK, all right, here we go. They stopped and they stopped maybe a foot in front of the motorcycle, which would have then come careening right into me. So I'm just <laughs> like, oh, thank God. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem is. While I'm thinking all of this, I tried standing up because I thought I was relatively okay, only to realize that my foot's not the right direction. So I had broken both bones below the left knee Mm -hmm. and I am laying on the pavement. First responder, uh, uh, not a first responder, but a... uh, Jimmy John's guy. A Jimmy John's. Yeah, sorry. I, I got to have my story. I remember that part. A Jimmy, J- guy, uh, Jimmy John's delivery guy runs up and is like, don't move, dude. I've called an ambulance. And I we lock eyes for just the briefest moments. And I'm like, wow, that was freaky fast. And that's when the shock wore off. And I was just like, and my leg is so broken. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. So, I appreciate the fact that it was a Jimmy John's guy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. all like, the people that it could have been. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it was, it was that guy. The uh, like a uh, oh goodness, uh, someone uh, akin to a sports medicine person was like, "Hey, I'm so and so. I've got this qualification." I'm like, "Yep, you're good. If you want, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. If you want to cut the the pants to see if I've got bones sticking out, and then talk to the paramedics for me. Cool, that's fine, buddy." <laughs> I, I don't hurt think I can so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh yeah. Met every single person who rode a motorcycle, including a little old lady who rode in a outlaw motorcycle gang 
in the 70s. That's it awesome. Was cool. <laughs> <laughs> she was a cool old lady. I want to be her when I grow up. <laughs> Don't we all want to be cool old ladies when we grow up? Yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah. What I remember. It's, it's 2022. Not, not long after you got discharged from the hospital was the annual Halloween party. And I don't know how much of that you remember, but I remember that being very entertaining because oh, you had a lot of good drugs at that point. Oh, yeah. No, it was good painkillers. <laughs> so why is it always your friends in Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, Archer. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Ian, have you, uh, have you heard that story? I'm going to say I'm almost positive, but I'm not recalling it at this time. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, well, we'll talk about that one off air because that one's uh, a little less uh, family friendly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, th this, this was the family friendly rendition of my story. <laughs> oh, the, the not safe for work edition has far more swearing and is oh, yeah. far more colorful. It is. Oh, sure. It is a sight sure. to behold. There are combinations that you've probably never heard of or dreamt of. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's uh, so, so anyway, take care of your body because. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And don't get hit yeah. by a limo while you're on your motorcycle what? there, Eagle. That's, that's our lesson for I'd you. Like to think, I'd like to think that it was Dennis Rodman's limo. <laughs> don't know why it's Dennis Rodman, but I'm pretty sure uh, that's he who He usually was. rides his motorcycle. I was because that would be a much cooler story. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> oh, oh man. yeah. Would it be cooler but, or scarier? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'm really hoping. I think the word that you used before that tangent, you know, kind of that wake up call. I'm really hoping that's what this is because. Yeah. I think there's a lot of good disc golf the Eagle can one you know still play. Oh yeah. And I want to see him be as successful as possible. Um, one thing I thought of was mm -hmm. his title sponsor, Discmania. I'm surprised they didn't put pressure on him to get this checked out. Cuz they're they, they don't have numbers released, but they're paying him a pretty chunk of change. Mm -hmm. You know, at first I thought Pro Tour, but Pro Tour really doesn't have anything to do with that. They don't. I mean, no offense, but they don't care either way. Yeah, I, I, I am a little bit surprised, but, but like we've seen something similar with Simon. Yep. You know, another Discmania guy, um, you know, so it it might just be that Discmania says, you know, they might have something in their contract where. If they don't get it, you know, some number of appearances or something like that, they don't get as much. Yeah. And who honestly yeah, but knows? But usually there's a health clause that would be like, mm -hmm. if you are not well enough to play, then once you are, you have to step up and fulfill. But one mm -hmm. of the weird things is that like disc golf is in a weird spot with contracts. So mm -hmm. that may or may not be in there like this year is the first year we really saw lawyers and agents and mm -hmm. he signed long before that so well and i mean that, think about every pro sports contract ever has things in it like you can't ride a motorcycle or um you know you can't go to space or stupid things like that to you know protect so you're saying paying. jeff bezos can't play pro sports um, <laughs> Jeff Bezos he went could to make his Jeff Bezos could make his own sports league and play in that. So, I think he's an exception here. Yeah, I wouldn't watch him play pro sports, but hang on, I have to let the cat out of the basement. <laughs> you have to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> no, the basement, which sounds like a much more confusing code word. <laughs> it does. It does. Um, so really quickly, <laughs> while we're waiting for him to come back, um, I'll go ahead and go through some other notable names uh, on the MPO side and where they finished. Uh, Mason Ford tied, finished for th 13th, finished tied for 13th. Wow. Easy for me to say. Uh, Nico finished tied for 15th. 
with James Conrad. Uh, Emerson Keith was tied for 18th. Uh, Kyle Klein and Brody Smith were tied for 25th. Garrett Gerthy was 29th. Drew Gibson was 30th. Yep. Uh, Luke Humphreys tied for 31st. <sighs> Chris Clemens tied for 31st. Eric Oakley tied for 38th. Um, just trying to see. Zach Melton tied for 51st. Linus Carlson tied for 51st. Andrew Marwee tied for 56th. Gavin Rathbun in his first tournament back, correct? Yeah, he finally made it back after that labrum surgery. Yeah. Huh. That huh. sounds familiar. Going back. Uh, so he was tied for 56th. Yep. Uh, Nathan Queden tied for 59th. Big Jerem tied for 59th. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What that's, other? That's about it. Yeah. Philo and Yuli finished tied for 71st. Um, yeah, I think that's the biggest of the names. Just double checking that there wasn't anyone weird at like the very end besides Eagle, who, of course, DNF. Uh, one of two people DNF. Um, but that's uh, neither here nor there. So any other or any other stories, names that you guys want to point out from the MPO side? Nope. All right. All right. So, so let's, let's do a quick recap of the FPO. Uh, Kristen Tatar, I think that pretty well covers it. <laughs> yeah. She won by 10 strokes. She, uh, yeah. So she won yeah. by 10. She's 24 under. Missy Gannon was second at 14 down. Tied for third were Ella Hansen and Kat Merch, who was just like everybody's favorite player. This round, I, this tournament. I, I did not realize that Cat Merch was only like 18. Yeah. I didn't just realize that until. Shredding it. Yeah, I didn't realize that until I saw. It was some video of her. Oh, she. She like found a spider on a disc and was like. Doing that that thing where you're like, okay, come on, let's, let's go, go, go over there, you know. <laughs> yeah, she threw it in the woods. Yeah. Or, well, yeah. set it yeah. in the woods. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, you know, I'm good. I want to follow her on social media. And then I, I went and clicked on her profile and it's like 18 year old disc golfer. And I'm like, oh, yep. And she's <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, we we were so hyped up about Haley King. And I almost feel like Cat Merch has been better this year. Yeah. And then you got fifth place. You had another tie here. Holland Hanley mm-hmm. and Katrina Allen. Paige Pierce seventh was seventh. Place was another tie. Uh, as Paige uh, and Valerie, Valerie yep. tied for seventh. Valerie Mondahano and Lisa Fakus taken down ninth. There's two more people tied at tenth. Haley King and Alexis Mondahano, her younger sister. Uh, all the young guns all the young in the guns. FPO field. Yeah. Like, Paige really isn't old, but she's old compared to this field. I mean, and same with Katrina I mean, Allen. Well, and Lisa Fakus is not young compared to those other names that we talked about. It's crazy. Oh my gosh! Yeah. There's, there's so many is, good young female disc golfers: Kona, Macy Valadez, just to name a couple. I mean, the nice thing is, especially in something like golf, although uh, you can argue because you're throwing discs instead of swinging a club. Uh, even though professional sports really is a young person's game, they're only going to get more refined and the skill is hopefully yep. going to increase. So although they may lose some of that oomph behind the disc, mm-hmm. you're going to see mm-hmm. a lot better placements as they oh, continue to go on their career. Older, quote unquote, women are still pumping it out there. Uh, I think Paige Pierce still is the farthest thrower yeah. on tour. Well, um, and, and, and at the All Star event, she had the a, furthest throw. Disc golf is kind of in a weird spot right now, where we don't know when someone's twilight is. Yeah, like Paul Macbeth is thirty-five 
ish. Is he that old? Doesn't he's like somewhere he around old. there. Um, I mean, does he still do frosted tips? That'll let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he shows up rocking Backstreet Boys. Uh, he is 31. 31. 31. So he's about our age. But still, Speak for who yourself. Knows? I'm still in my 20s. <laughs> so you say. Uh, hey, hey. I still have two more months. <laughs> Get you a bottle of scotch for your birthday. No. <laughs> <laughs> but make it a good one so I can sell it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So no big surprises there. I think everybody kind of played out about where they were. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like we said, the big thing was Kristen coming back after what well, could have been a really tough loss last week and coming back and just yep. cruising. And she shot the hot round, hot we, round you know, uh, you know, day one and two, didn't get it yep. day three, but I mean, just going I, under, which another thing. I would thing, say like, with her, it was um, not trying to take anything away from Paige winning another major, but it was more so Kristen losing it than Paige winning it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Airballing that pot and then. Yeah. But which a uh, really back. quick note on this field. Yep. 18 players were even or under. Or even or that's, better. That's pretty however solid. you want to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Um some wow. names that did not make even were uh Macy Veladiaz finished at plus one, uh Madison Walker, mm-hmm. Natalie Ryan, Rebecca Cox, Holly Finley. Holly Maria Finley Oliva. though is more of a woods golfer she'll yeah. shred yeah. in the woods and yeah i don't yeah. think she has the same distance so this course was not great for her yep. and ddo is probably going to go the same way yeah, yeah. Yep. yep that's why that's she's why she one of the next, next pack outside of the yes super super elite names that we've come to know and love mm-hmm. um, um so, so anyone, anyone else that you guys want to highlight from the FPO field? Nope. All right. I get all my news from you guys, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so he'll, he'll be able to comment on this one next week. <laughs> so so uh, it's funny you say that because you know where I get my disc golf news? <laughs> Joe. From me. <laughs> it's kind of funny watching you guys point. Because on my screen, it was hilarious. <laughs> RJ got it right. Ian, you picked the wrong direction. I forgot where I was. <laughs> you was awesome. by this way. It's, it's easy way. for me because it's just straight up. <laughs> yeah. Ian, you keep pointing to the wrong direction. I don't know because everything's like he's, weird. He's that way. Yeah, I'd go this yeah. way. <laughs> uh, Man cave bar is open, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh man so we're all invited yeah yep. hold on uh, let I, me drive three hours <clears throat> yeah i'll I was be gonna there. say it, it might be a little bit but you're closer than ben so yes yes at some point we'll have to get all four of us on um oh that'll be interesting oh gosh listeners we apologize in advance for that <laughs> i think yeah. that'll be our, the highest rated episode it'll be uh ridiculous oh yes yes It'll definitely be the drunkest of the episodes. Yes. We're going to have to record on a Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe live stream. Oh, Uh, ooh, ooh, there's an idea. Uh, Anyway. Uh, Anyway, so. so, Yeah, let's let's talk about about some. some, Let's let's go from some some really high quality quality disc golf to some. Meh. Disc golf. Yeah. Uh, Well, uh, I'm going to start least... out on the lower note. I didn't make the Fort Wayne or Fort Disc Golf Club team because I was not one of the top five scores from the tournament on Sunday today. As of recording, I shot even in the first round four or five bogeys and four or five birdies. I can't remember what it was, but it was even. 
in the group chat you said five and five. So. I think I said five and five, but it might have been four and four. We did paper cards, so I. Oh. Uh, either way, it was even, uh, and I walked away going, "Yeah, I felt great about this round." <laughs> and then I saw my score went, "Oh, <laughs> damn." Hey, hey. Yeah. And then yeah, we played round two at a different course. I shot three under with two double bogeys and a triple. So, so did you yeah. just birdie the rest yep. of them? Oh, I had a lot of birdies. I had an did eagle. Did you get an eagle? Ooh. Ooh, which hole was that? 18. The yeah, that means dog leg awesome. hard right, forehand. And With your tilt? No, no, oh. not that far. This is like a 400 and something odd foot hole in the woods. Oh. And... I threw my Lucid X Chameleon Sheriff <laughs> and I just threw it. I was like, ooh, that got a little sneaky in there. I was the only one to get an eagle on that that was in the circle. Actually, one of two, because the other guy threw a turnover shot. I threw a forehand. He was about 25 out. I was about 17. Hmm. It was impressive. I was shocked. And I almost got the eagle on another hole, but... That was Putting. a hundred foot shot, like throwing mm. basically. Yeah. Yeah. And I was three feet to the right pin high yeah. on my upshot. Yep. Yep. So it was nice. good. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Match yeah, play I mean, went much better. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, so they're not going to give you any bonus points for the match play you've been doing so lately. The way they're doing it is the top five scores automatically get on the team. Then those people captain's discretion picks five more people from the club so there's a chance okay okay um yeah last year i was the only one not on the team who was in the final four hmm. but, weird yeah that's a but weird thought the other guys were good and nobody re nobody thought they thought i got lucky and to be fair i don't blame them yeah uh, but this year you know lightning striking twice I yeah, believe now yeah. this means my face is going to be the watermark on the bracket for next year. I, I, I did nice. see that in the That, uh, that was my Facebook motivation group. to make it because he said it in the Sweet 16. I was like, well, now yep. I have to. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you sending that to the group chat, um, which I got to say, if you are for, for listeners and viewers, if you are not part of your local disc golf group on you know, in some way, shape, or form. Probably Facebook. Um, it's yeah, the easiest. Probably Facebook. That's that's what I'm on. You know, today it. I mean, this weekend was gorgeous here. It was, um, you know, 70s and to 80s. windy. Yes, yes, yes very windy. Uh, I I took a uh, bogey on the last hole my round today. Um, but it was something where like. I threw a putt, threw a putt and, I, and I when I I, I got, I got the, the bogey, bogey, I was just like, you know, you know I'm not even mad about that one because it, yep. it could have gone, gone so much so worse. Much. There was a hole where the CTP that won it was about 28 feet. Nobody got closer on a 300 foot hole. And these are all guys who legitimately could make the team like. Hmm. Even the weakest players. That's how windy it was. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Our entire card was probably edge of circle, so about 33-ish feet. We all laid up. And mm -hmm. I was probably the weakest putter in the group. <laughs> yeah. And, like, there are some really good putters, and we're like, not a chance. Hole one at Tillman. It's, mm -hmm. it's up on a small, like, berm. And yeah. so the wind just plays with it and your yep. rollaways will go 50, 60, 70 feet easy. It's it's like you're getting dead. It's not as yep. bad as that hill like at O'Brien, but it's, oh. it's a it's a berm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, O'Brien Park has a, a basket at the top of a pretty tall hill. That, nah. That's way out by me. Yes. In yeah. The neighboring town. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but anyway, getting back to what I was on. Um, yes. Drugs. Yeah. So the, 
No, not drugs. <sighs> that was that was Ian, that was Ian from when he got hit by Dennis Rodman. Rodman. Yeah. <laughs> Like, That's um, the official story now. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, or, or was Dennis Rodman on drugs? Probably yes. both. All of the above. Anyway. Anyway. Um, and we're going to move away from that before the fire truck of lawyers gets involved. Um, so the. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so today was really nice. And I was up early. So I just threw it out in the, the Facebook group i'm like hey does anyone want to play this morning you know i was i was looking at going to a course relatively near me that i i've never played before um someone responded and they're like no nah, i don't really want to go up there but you know you want to play anything in the you know in the area and i'm like yeah okay here's a couple options ended up having a blast with this guy it was a lot of fun to to play with him um, it was a good first you know, date I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, just d- d- golfing always a good first date. Uh, hey, no, you I mean, know? You know, it it's Maybe. not actually a bad idea. I mean, you get a chance to actually talk with each other. Huh? Yeah. That's actually not a bad. Anyway, uh, moving on from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it was one of those where. You know, it, it's always nice to go out and meet other local people that are you know, mm-hmm. playing, you know, have have different bags from you. I threw a couple different things today from his bag that, that I was just like, oh, I, I might have to get me one of these or anything you know, and, fun. You know, huh? Anything fun. It was a. The one that sticks out to me was a disc mania disc. I'm trying to think of what it was. It's a mid range, uh, a little bit overstable. Mutant? No. I think that's a in- mid range. Instinct, maybe? Yeah. There's a tactic, but I think that's a putter. Yeah. I'm not as familiar I'd, with that yeah, I'd, Italian I'd have to Swedish look at plastic. It again. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to look at it again. Um, yeah. You know, but, but just one of those things where it's, you know, seeing those different lines and everything is always. Mm-hmm. You know, interesting to watch and and you know getting to know other players and whatnot it was one of those where i mean we we went through and played 18 holes and i was done and i'm like man i know i just got done playing around but man i really just want to go play another round because i'm just out here having yep. fun yep yep you saying playing mm-hmm. with me isn't fun <laughs> sure um i well <laughs> I asked if you wanted to play yesterday and you told me no. No, because I had to watch my daughter and be a good husband. So my wife would let me play today. In, in well, fairness, I took the dog out with me yesterday. I think I ended up playing like a total of seven holes on a nine hole course. <laughs> and she was gassed. And I'm just like, OK, time to go home. Yeah, that's what the stroller's for, man. You just, <laughs> she'll be fine. Get the puppy stroller. She'll be fine. Yeah. Well, for both no, of you, she, you just she wiggles too much. She just just she'd flop like out. Get, get a radio huh? flyer wagon. It'll be fine. Oh, Everyone's fine. good. Yeah, but I've uh, got a toddler. <laughs> I I played maybe three holes when I <laughs> <laughs> tried to on Friday evening. He was like, "Yes, Dad, let us play," and then very quickly was like, "No, Dad, there's a sand pit." Over there. That's what I want to do. And then so proceeded to slam there. my discs into trees. <laughs> what else is new? I mean, yeah. do, isn't isn't that just taking out the middleman of you slamming them into trees? <laughs> not the not the ones that he got a hold of. I was gonna say nicer ones. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking I know which course you're talking about and the holes Castaldo. you would have been on, there aren't trees. <laughs> Oh, no, no. He just found things to hit. Oh, and the giant, you know, metal stanchion for the uh, electrical lines. Yep. Yeah, he, he, he took my uh, uh, West Side Discs King and was just like, this makes a funny sound, Dad. And I was like, no, stop. Oh. You're right. But this flippy disc is now more flippy. Yeah, he, he, he refuses to play with my super old Wraith. This is the first disc I ever bought. From like 2007, something like He's that. Like, yeah. No, Dad, this is you don't use this disc. I need yep. to use the discs that you're using, and I'm just like, ah. <laughs> of course. <sighs> oh man. Yeah. 
but uh, well, so I mean, I'm curious how match play is going to work out this weekend. So I yes, you said I did play your this past yeah, Wednesday. Let's, Let's talk about the Elite Eight, and then we can talk about the Final Four. Yes. So, so go I ahead. jumped out to an early lead. I took mm-hmm. the first three holes. Well, he picked the course. We played Tillman Whites, which is generally the shortest tees. Um, some of the tees are red and white. So it, eh. reds are the middles. Blues are longs. Um, be playing reds next weekend. But... Uh, took the first couple holes. Uh, we started on hole 10, and I took 10, 11, and 12. I think we push. No, I took I took 13. Mm-hmm. And then 14. You were four or five up. I was four up because hole 14. <laughs> I forgot how hands work and how discs fly. Um, I threw... So we played... So that one had two baskets in and so we played the short left one and i threw something ended up in the weeds and then or no i ended up behind some trees and i had absolutely nothing so i tried to throw a scuba which was tracking great for the first 10 feet and then it wasn't and and it was bad (laughs) and he ended up winning that hole yeah it was bad yeah you you threw that scuba and i was so confused because on I the camera, really had nothing like, yeah, on on the camera, it looked like you could have done like a step out, you know, right lean forehand type thing. There you was, said in the group chat that, that just that was a bad option. Yeah. It, if if not the angle, option at all angle he had, you couldn't tell the way the trees were. There was absolutely nothing. I could mm-hmm. have tried an Anheuser shot with my putter, but the way the wind was blowing, I was fairly confident that I would have landed still Anheuser and thrown a roller and just past the basket it slopes down so I was like well scuba's the best option yeah which it didn't roll anywhere it just didn't end up near the basket either <laughs> you probably still had like a 25 30 foot putt yeah and it didn't go well and he yeah he got it so yeah i mean he more or less parked it yep so and then there's some fun holes mm-hmm. um i ended up so tillman's 19 holes um on hole six no five hole five uh i'm close i'm almost dormant and i take my zone out i throw a forehand flex and almost ace that hole and then i'm dormant so i could if we if he wins out then we go into playoff Hmm. and on hole six i was like well i don't normally play the white tee there looks like there's a forehand line here let's throw this i'm probably six inches long at the basket and almost ace it Mm -hmm. and then we finish out we just we play the last couple holes just for fun. I take mm-hmm. my berg on a 200 foot dead straight shot and I cruise right over the basket. Nice. <laughs> I was like, I've never had so many near aces in a row <laughs> and not actually hit like I didn't hit metal on a single one. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's that, tough. The one on seven is bad because there's a little ditch behind it. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't have to make the putt because it was like 40 feet uphill through some bushes. <laughs> yeah, um, but he was it was fun. We had a good time playing um, the guy that was filming. Uh, something did not agree with him after I threw one really bad shot, relatively bad shot, I should say. He handed the camera off and turned around and puked in the woods. And I just looked at him. I was like. That shot wasn't that bad. <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty bad. It, it was hole 16, that forehand shot. Like, that hole I park every single time. Like, I thought I had a bad shot on it today, and I was like, oh, no, that caught edge and rolled down the hill. No, it caught edge and leaned up against the basket. 
Of course it did. <laughs> that hole, like hole 16, I don't want to jinx myself, so I'm not going to say anything else because I have to play this. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yep. I think that's a good segue into next week. Uh, there is not yep. just your match on coverage, but the entirety of the final four, the, yes. the two semifinal matchups. Yep. Um, you will be taking on it's the me, Chad, me and Chad, and on the other side, it's Ben and Zach playing each other. And right now, Ben and I are tied with who has the most wins in this two-year tournament history Ooh. at eight. Yep. So what I'm ben hearing is you two are destined to meet in the finals. Or we're both Winner destined take to all. lose <laughs> yeah. because we both Winner lost take all. in the final four last uh-huh. year. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Oh, so I'll try man. to get that. Uh, I'll get that link out there. Three o'clock. Yep. Eastern. Two o'clock. Yep. Central. One o'clock mountain. Noon over on the uh, West Coast. So you, you need Lord to find knows a, what in Hawaii. A quick print t-shirt shop so that way you can get uh you and ben shirts that just say destinies entwined <laughs> <laughs> yes yes there oh. you go there's your final four shirt <clears throat> nailed you it ben. nailed it Done. that yes. would be fun looks like we're going to the mall do those yes. shops <laughs> exist oh no my mother-in-law has a cricket oh Ha-ha. yeah there you go perfect you're done yeah. done yeah she's yes. much cheaper we- we should clarify, this is not half in the bag, Ben. This is a different Ben. Yes, this is a I, I, club I, Ben. Yes. No, I was like, I, I, I know that you know that. Club. I'm clarifying that for the uh, listeners that do not are not intimately familiar with the... I mean, uh, if they've been listening long enough, they should know. They should know. Yeah. They should know He's that Ben is up behind the in, cheddar curtain. Yeah. Uh, you, how many times have you mentioned that? Like a every lot. episode? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and a Land lot of this beer episode. and cheese. Yes. <sighs> but the land of beer and cheese. So delicious. Uh, but <clears throat> so how are you feeling going into the, the final four here? Well, I'm glad I got all the bad throws out today. <laughs> but to be honest, um, uh, with playing match play, it's so different from stroke play because I, I just have to beat him on a hole. It doesn't matter what I end up throwing. Yeah, but, you know, statistics will still come to play in here where you oh, yeah. kind of have an idea of your opponent's general averages. From because, I, you know, what people have told me, the guy I'm playing, because I, I don't know him, um, mm-hmm. he's very good in the woods and throws putters very, very well. Um, okay. And this is a bit longer, so I don't know how that's going to work out for him. Um, he's picked every single course. He's seated fourth, which it's all random draw. So that yeah. doesn't mean anything mm-hmm. other than he got to pick everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he picked Mosier law or shorts this last time. So, hmm. Who knows? Um, that's a very short, very technical putter course, yes. basically. Yes. Um, so I'll be curious how he handles the longer courses that we're playing here. Yeah. So, I, I mean, and, I know you're going to be more aggressive because for match play, aggression usually is better. Yes. But what is your general strategy you're hoping to go in? Are you going to try to like, get inside of circle one as much as possible? I try like on the first or second shot. Yeah. Um, like Tillman, I do fairly well. PFW is obviously the course that I do the best at, yeah. but um, PF or Tillman, I've done pretty well. I don't know if we're starting on hole one or hole 10. Uh, hole 10 has got better parking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we last year we started on 10. I just went through like that. Um, who knows? I, I really don't care either way. Uh, hole one, I could see being a push. Hole two, I feel like I'd have the advantage, um, especially if the wind is up. Yeah. 
I throw a lot of overstable plastic. A yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that and you're, hopefully you're uh, ready for a slightly chillier weekend. Yes. Because like all week is going to be like nice and yeah. brisk. Yes. I know. It's been crazy. What is yeah. what is the forecast right now? Ten yeah. days. I know Mother Nature teased us this weekend with that 78 oh, yeah. degree weather and... I yep. think, yeah, like you said, this week's all going to be back down in the 50s, 60s here in the Midwest. So. As, as of right now, if that, if that. next Saturday, 60 is the high, 40% chance of rain. So who really knows? That's way too far. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, it'll it'll be 60 or minus 20 degrees. Yeah. Yep. There's a forty percent chance snow. of rain. Who knows? Plus or minus thirty <laughs> percent. Yep. I'm hoping for a little bit of wind, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, but, is that just because you think that your bag's set up better for the wind than most people's? Yes. Just because you have so much overstable plastic. Yep. I laced a few drives today. I had one beautiful drive. I took my chameleon stiletto threw it on hyzer and it held hyzer the whole way but went dead straight it was weird that is weird that that's how strong right. the left to right wind was Ooh. going Jeez. and i ended yeah. up yeah yeah it was crazy and that is a very stable disc i don't have one with me but yeah it was yeah. it was very challenging. I'm hoping it's way less wind, but just, we'll see. Just less, the right amount of Goldilocks wind. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not too hot, not too cold. Yep. 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 Well, good luck, buddy. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I I, think I do have one quick question about match play real quick for you, though. Uh-oh. So you said that you threw that scuba. Yes. What exactly is that? What, what? How do you actually throw a scuba? How are you supposed to throw it, or how did I throw yes. it? Yes. How How are you <laughs> supposed to throw it? I knew that you. I knew know that you didn't throw it right, but so you know. Let, let's you, Let's give our uh, listeners and viewers a little bit of an education here. Yeah. So, what you're supposed to do is go watch the video by Brody Smith. <laughs> <laughs> because he has thrown it in multiple times on mm-hmm. tour on film uh, mm-hmm. but the quick and dirty is take it like a forehand mm-hmm. and then you flip it over go basically from what i do is kind of go from my left shoulder almost like a rainbow throwing mm-hmm. it across like that if mm. you throw it just right it'll keep going and then it'll fan out or pan out and basically drop straight down. So it's great if there's Hmm. danger right behind the basket and you want to give it a bid or want to get it close. So it should land upside down, perfectly flat and you don't Mm -hmm. have to worry about a roll away. Yeah. Is it something where you're supposed to take something over stable, under stable putter doesn't matter. Putter. Yes. Your normal putter. Okay. Um, yeah, there are different ways, a little bit different ways to throw it, depending on how far you want to go. Mm-hmm. But it's all kind of just changing your angles, yeah. which really you just need to get out into a field and try it. Yeah. Um, and also no, watch that video because mm-hmm. he used to throw them all the time in ultimate and he's very good at them. Yeah. So I will yep. definitely send views to his channel. <laughs> yes. As if he needs it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was curious because, like, there was a shot today when I was playing, and I'm like, I'm going to pull out the Brody Scuba, and I get it up, out, and I get it up, and I'm just like, I start looking at my line, and I'm like, nah. No, no, I'm not. I'm just going to lay this one up there. (laughs) Yeah. Nope, I, I have not practiced this shot. I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm not overly convinced. Oh, there was like a, a stick that I would have hit if I actually like <laughs> followed through on it. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't do that. But yeah, that was it was, it was an idea. <laughs> speaking of sticks, one of the putts I had to make today, I was backed into a tree and there was a stick probably about 
five inches from my eye as I'm like trying to putt straight ahead. It was great. Well, but I would learned my lesson from it? last year and ignored it and made the putt nice. <laughs> rather than Would choking. you rather have it five inches from your eye or five inches from something else? I have plenty of, so I took out from my tire on my cart, probably a two and a half inch spike. You know, those trees that Mm -hmm. the spikes that grow. Yeah. That was in my tire for my cart. It was insane. Does your cart still have air in its tire? Yeah. It's those foam tire things. Oh, okay. So you don't have to worry because they used to make them with air and inner tubes and mm-hmm. then they had to send out a lot of replacements because, because people were going fact, to places with honeysuckle and fun fact disc golf uh, courses aren't always like perfectly manicured mm-hmm. what castaldo is actually really good especially since they took down the forest yeah it's, it's growing back though getting Slowly. there those what, bushes wait, were now? awesome and awful so there's a, a, a local course, mm-hmm. uh, Castaldo Park. Mm-hmm. This okay. is a uh, whole, whole three. And yep. um, you've essentially got your T is roughly the same elevation as the basket. The basket is maybe 400 feet. No, I remember like lasering it. It was like 330. I think is whoever in... measured it. Took, uh, took 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 like one of those wheels and walked down the hill to the gap, which was off to the left, and then walked back up. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but the thing was, it was essentially just overgrown forest preserve brush bramble. So yep. mm-hmm. we never played that you uh, <laughs> took a stroke penalty. You just took a half hour penalty. <laughs> it's just yes. right, it's in there. All right, one half hour. <laughs> yep. You go find your disc. We're going to keep playing. <laughs> that was awful. Is, I remember, is that the one that's in Woodridge, it looks like? Yep. Yeah, that's Woodridge. Okay. I remember. I'm, I'm just going to add that one to the wish list. It was you and me and Sis and Jim. And we'd play that course so much that we'd get mad if we weren't shooting double digits down after two <laughs> <Yep>. rounds. <laughs> oh, yeah. Par is also very soft. I don't think oh, there's yeah. a par three. I think they're no. all fours Yeesh. and one five. Yeesh. Yeah. So we played you know, our rules, which was just everything was three. Yes. If you didn't make it in three, you were like, shame, shame on you. Well, the longest hole, I mean, outside of the 400, which wasn't, is like two something. 70, 60. Yeah. It's nothing crazy. No. Hey, there are two threes. There's a 186 foot par three, apparently. Yes. Uh, if you if you play it the 18 hole or 27 hole layout. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, then then they're all par threes on U disc. Yes, but if you're going off the sign, which U disc yes wasn't a thing when we started. No, I I have my original app, which was. Uh, free scorecard i think yes i remember oh, that app Hold when on. i used to have an android easy scorecard there easy we go. scorecard yes yep <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome but uh yeah no i it, it's a fun course but yeah no they they tore all of the trees down and they're now just kind of like eh, it'll regrow yeah <laughs> no so one's doing on... anything to just just for reference, uh, Joe, looks like your best on U-Disc is 22 on a par 35. Yes, that sounds about right. <laughs> and I missed a couple eagles, I know. Yeah. What, what happened on this uh, round that, that's a 28? Oh, Gosh, that was slacker. me pretending to be Simon. So I was like, what's the smart line? Okay. I'm going to take a putter and throw it on hyzer as far as I can. (laughs) Oh, it would be smart to throw a backhand on this. I'm going to force a forehand through here. Yep. Because I just started having fun and just like screwing around. Oh, yeah. That course. Oh, yeah. Because I know. Well, Sis gave me a hard time for uh, 
having a cart because that was right before Clash at the Canyons. Oh, and yeah. I was like, well, I'm not. I, I've got my cart here. I'm not taking everything apart. This is just dumb. And he gave me a hard time. So I was like, all right, well, first round, got to take it serious. <laughs> Second round, <laughs> time to screw around. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's, it was a that's good time. fantastic. <laughs> he got oh. real mad when he was like, oh, I'm bad at this now. <laughs> yeah. That's what he gets for I, moving away from being right next to the park. Yeah, literally, it was across the street. <laughs> <laughs> That's like me and, and my favorite course. Yep. yep. Uh, I, I really enjoy Catherine Leg or Leggy Memorial Park, which I is. I've, have we played the, that? We did. And I okay. also got married there. <laughs> That's, oh yeah that, that's why i knew that that place you could have events <laughs> <laughs> yay um, disc golf that uh in terms of a park is 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 actually one i would wish list it's it's much better it's, layout oh yeah what, I remember it's more that one. That? catherine one is leg or leggy l-e-g-g-e it's in oh, hinsdale go. yep that one's more fun yeah I want to get I mean, back it's out also an 18 and hole. Yeah. So I want to get but, back out and play the Oaks in Mokina again. I haven't played oh that God. in forever. Uh, yeah, dude. Oh, man. That was a 27 hole course yep. with it's kind of like Tillman in that they have three T pads mm. on mm-hmm. almost every single one. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I remember it being challenging, but fun. And I'd well, like to go back now and see if i still think it's challenging i think it'll be fun three four or five hundred footers and then you were like and now i'm in the woods in this tiny corridor yes but i want to see if i still think it's a tiny corridor true or after playing like pfw and tillman you know Uh, i'm not trying to knock it but like i want to go back and play now because that i remember going there and having fun because that that course kind of kicked my ass. Oh yeah, when we, the first time we went there. Oh, oh that we was were bad. Awful. We were so bad. That was so bad. I believe we stopped keeping score and just said, "We'll just next we'll time." Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will be uh, fine. That's a uh, that's actually the guy that I was playing with today. He and I both agreed that while it would be really fun to play like W R Jackson and Jonesboro and the beast and, and all those courses that the pro tour goes on. Yep. It might be one of those where it's like, all right. And I'm just going to mark it as played on U disc because yep. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't want to count up my 10 strokes each hole. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, were you, were you playing a tournament? Cause that's par plus four. Oh wait, <laughs> maybe you should have just par plus four it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's I I think I would struggle there too. I I really want to get out to Toboggan. That's probably mm-hmm. our closest pro tour stop yeah. here. Yeah. That was that was the other one that we mentioned today was it'd be so much fun to just play it to see how challenging it is. Yep. A lot of it elevation. Would, mm-hmm. Which God. I actually learned yeah. this week that Jonesboro there's the championship course. And mm-hmm. then there's the recreational course and the championship Smart. course. You can only play like from October to May October. because it's an active hay farm. Yes. 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 Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, like, it's oh, all there go my land. allergies. Yep. <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, yeah. I think this is a good place to end it. I think so. Um, for those of you that are hey. watching, uh, if you don't want to look at all of our ugly faces um, or whatever Joe's doing, um, you can <laughs> you can find us wherever you find your major podcasts. Uh, you can also find this one. Um, yeah, it must be an oversight. Don't ask me. Yeah. Uh, if you are listening and you want to see the various funny things that we do while we're recording uh you can find us on joe's youtube channel uh slash joe's disc golf where you can also find his podcast and his live stream yep um which are i guess technically the same thing kind of yeah no they are the same thing (laughs) 
<laughs> don't tell them that, don't Joe. Get, that. You'll get don't more views that way. That way. It's the, <laughs> well, I already unlist the uh, live stream after it's done. Yeah. Too many uh, issues. Uh, yeah. Yay, yeah. YouTube. So you, know, you can definitely overlords. come by and in chat uh usually at least one of us from half in the bag tries to drop in a little bit and uh you know yeah maybe make a few funny comments uh give joe a hard time uh you know it's looking like in. that live stream will probably be closer to nine or nine thirty because home sports yeah. go sports Go team ball. yeah Sports. I don't know if it's baseball or softball. We're trying. One team it's ball. is good. One team is not good. <laughs> but I won't say Either which way, is which. Either way, it'll be done in five. No. And that's when Joe just says, Bummer. here's my bottle of lemonade. Yes. <laughs> These games are great. <laughs> uh, I, I will say. Two pitchers. <laughs> I will say, watching watching doubleheader baseball this weekend was so much more enjoyable when it was sunny and seventy five, yeah. re- compared to when it was uh, Not overcast and forty and windy. and windy, and somehow we finished two games plus a lunch break in four hours, whereas I swear we've had some games this year go three hours. <laughs> those are usually the bad weather ones yeah. and i just turned to my coach and said i've got a bone to pick with you <laughs> uh, well but, i think that just about but, does it though yes so uh joe thank you for all that you do for this podcast yeah buddy thanks thanks, thanks for, for having me stopping on. by yes ian thanks for thanks for joining um it was great to have you on after we voluntold you uh, last week. I, uh, if you guys will have me back, <laughs> I, I think we can make this a slightly more regular thing. Oh, I think awesome. so. Awesome. You know, like, like I said, we we are temporarily down a host. Uh, so it sounds like now we are temporarily up a host. Woo-hoo. Now taking applications. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. There's going to be at least two weeks in june that i will not be able to to be a part of this so yeah things are going to get um, interesting when i go on vacation considering yes. i run it all <laughs> yes uh um, oh yeah i need to do some pre-recorded goes. stuff yeah <laughs> um oh well yes we're, we'll have to figure that out off air uh viewers listeners thanks for watching thanks for taking the time to listen to all of our shenanigans and uh, everyone make sure that you enjoy your round yep bye absolutely get out and throw peace